Hey, what's going on? Jayla Stegs here. We're back again. Uh, this time what we're doing is we're looking at polyrhythmic versus polymetric uh, sequencing. Uh, makes a uh, perfect topic for building on what we did last week. Um, we can just do some, some little tweaks here and there and we can uh, build up a lot of rhythmic complexity um, by just approaching the way that we clock uh, our, our sequences. Um, and so it's a good opportunity to kind of disambiguate these two terms. Uh, sometimes the polyrhythmic gets used when, when polymetric is more appropriate. So what better way to, to disambiguate that by actually making it yourself and getting a pretty clear working understanding of it. So let's just um, get into it. So what do we got over here? We've got a really similar scheme to what we've got last week. In fact, I've built this on top of that. So I suggest you load up the patcher from last week and kind of build on top of it. Um, but the first thing that you'll notice is that we've got a few more of these kind of uh, live.tab objects to be able to flick between modes. Uh, and that's going to be handy. So one of those modes here is we're able to flick between polymetric and polyrhythmic um, sequencing schemes. And the, the main thing to, to note about these two types of uh, rhythmic kind of paradigms is that um, they're relational. So you really need two sequencer lanes to be able to hear the difference. And um, you'll see in a minute what I mean. So we're still using this uh, division um, param to be able to split our uh, main phaser that's coming in, that's synced to the transport. And then we can divide that into an, the amount of steps that we want. And we can do the same for the second sequence of lane. So we've got playlist tilde here again, uh, doing the uh, the job of voicing our, our gen sequencer. And these uh, these playlist tildes, this one on the left here corresponds to sequence one. This one on the right here corresponds to sequence two. So first up, let's have a listen to polyrhythmic sequencing. So we're splitting this up into uh, this bar into divisions of six. So that's why we're getting that kind of triplet feel. We're doing that the same for both sequences. So if we listen to sequence one on its own. This is sequence two on its own. Nothing crazy there and really similar samples on both. Um, you'll be able to hear the difference in a minute because they're so sim similar. So with polyrhythmic sequencing, we change the sequence of two to divisions of eight. And we hear that on its own. Should be able to hear that that's a really steady 4-4 four, four pulse. Right? And contrasted to our triplet sequence that we've got on sequence one, when you play triplets against 4-4, four, four, for instance, a really common polyrhythm, over the duration of one bar, that's a strictly what a polyrhythm is. It's two different uh, note resolutions or uh, two different tempi uh, played against each other. And you'll notice here that the the one always lines up. So we're splitting that single bar into different note resolutions for each sequence. Now this is slightly different for polymetric uh, sequencing, which I actually find a little bit, a little bit more fun. Um, so with polymetric sequencing, uh, the note divisions in the bar they are the same for both sequences. So you know if you're using sixteenths, uh, you'll have sixteenths on both. But the difference here is that the the phases uh, become out of phase in when they repeat. So we have different um, different amounts of steps, uh, and this this is a technique that you can do in many many different ways. But it's really powerful uh, in being able to manipulate a single set or uh, or two sets of samples 
without having to change any of the samples, you can get you can get a lot more uh, rhythmic complexity just by changing the relationship between the phases of those two step sequences. So let's uh, let's have a listen. I might double time this so we can actually see it here. You should be able to um, you should be able to see the these two phases line up and this uh, this macro phase lane down here is indicating how many bars it's taking before these two sequences line up again. So you can see when this macro phase gets to its peak, that's when these two um, sequences line up again. So to begin with, I'll just make sure that they're both the same amount of divisions and you'll see everything lines up. It's the exact same thing, it's just twice as fast. But simply by changing that phase, you can get a, a lot of rhythmic complexity. So you can feel it falling out of phase and then falling back in again. So if we bring it back to six and six, six over six. We can actually change the feeling of um, how these groups relate to each other um, depending on the the different note uh, step lengths that we choose. So you should be able to hear that, that it, the different kinds of um, feelings that we can get from our grooves simply by changing the phase relationship between our two sequences um, can give give a pretty dramatic kind of different feeling, uh, kind of pushing and a pulling kind of feeling, depending on um, what what ratio we choose for these two. And it's um, based on what we've done last week. This is actually pretty pretty simple to implement. We can just kind of build on what we've already been doing. So the first thing that we need to do is make a new gen patcher. And we're just going to connect this up like this. And before we do anything else, we're going to have a look at our audio status window. And just making sure that you get these, uh, these two numbers here pretty low whenever you're doing um, time sensitive stuff and uh, just making sure that scheduler is in overdrive and audio interrupt is on. Cool, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, we're literally just gonna pass our, um, our main phaser that's, that's coming in. We're gonna pass it directly out so we can view it in our live.scope um, just as a reference. And uh, if you're not seeing any throughput here, that may be because you need to send this message from uh, your one bar, no beats, no units, uh, in directly into the phaser, and then you'll start getting that throughput. So the main thing that we're going to need here is we're going to need rate again, but this time we're going to use uh, the sync cycle mode for rate. And we're going to need a param to control it. So we've got two params here. One is the sequence one steps and the other one is the sequence one divisions. So the one that's actually gonna control right here is the sequence one division. And that's this, this param over here. The next thing that we want to do is that we want to, um, I'd like to show you how I set this, this stuff up here with these live.tabs um, to be able to switch between these different modes and just use this, the one outlet. Uh, as you can, might be kind of getting the impression that like this can start to get out of control. So it's nice to be able to just toggle between uh, using one outlet for all your debug views. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. We can use selector. Uh, this, this is an object that you've probably seen in MSP and used before. And it works similarly as an operator in gen. And we can use a param to control it. So I've just made a new param called sequence of one mode, adding one to it. And 
Cool. So what do we want to have coming into this, this selector here? What do we want to toggle between? So in my demonstration patch over here, I'm using these four modes. So I'll copy this UI, uh, live.tab in here. And we'll kind of work backwards. So this first one, ramp in, uh, corresponds to the, the rate here. So if we just want to see the rate on its own, So now you can see that we can alter the, um, the division, the clock division, and we're using uh, this first setting here, this first mode to, to view that change. And so we'd, uh, we'd like to see our steps as well, like we had uh, in the previous tube. So let's quickly implement that. So it's exactly what we did last time where just we've got this parameter up here, but we're not actually connecting it to anything. We can reference it by using the symbol, um, the name here. So we're multiplying this rate by the amount of steps where um, performing a ceiling operation. And then we're dividing by the amount of steps to normalize that back down to the range. So now we're able to control the amount of steps and view it using this mode here, just similar to what we did last time. And we can change that, update it. Uh, probably makes sense to make this a, a number box, not a flow num. Cool. So now uh, just finishing off these last two modes with um, trigs and ramp out. We can use the change operator to give us a the, the triggers for these for these steps if we want to have a look at it um, from that perspective. Sometimes I find that useful. So for this, uh, this trigs mode, we can see that we get a trig for each one of our steps. So we can see it um, if we would like to view it like this. And you'll, what, what I find handy about the change operator, um, you can see here that the only difference between these two outlets is this change operator. So it, it kind of handles this for us with just one operator, makes it nice and easy. And you can see that the first, uh, the first step of the the sequence uh, is in the negative range. So it's really easy to see this demarcation here. Um, if I change this to one, once it adjusts, the, the first downbeat um, is, is in this negative range. So it's really easy to see. And that's why I like it. And there's other stuff you can do with this. Um, this is the sign of the derivative. So it, you can do cool stuff with it later, which I'll show you. Cool, and now let's uh, just implement this last ramp out. So it's getting a little bit squishy in here, but um, you can see that I'm just only using a modulo one operator to kind of uh, just, just, we're getting, a, we'll get a phaser ramp from this, but it will be a ramp for each one of our steps. So to see what I mean here, these are our steps. So we can view it like this. So we've got three, three different ways that we can view our steps. We've got these triggers. We've got the steps themselves. So we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we've got these ramps. So if we uh, drop this down a little bit, sometimes it's nice to be able to view this from each one of these different things. And the good news now is that um, we have completed our first uh, our first step sequencer. Um, this is basically doing all of the jobs that we needed to do at the moment. And we can pretty much copy and paste this in, and make our second lane. So we're approaching uh, finishing this patch already. Isn't that nice when you can do that? We can just copy and paste the beauty of working in a digital format. Uh, if we were building our own Sequencer from components in electronics. We'd have to order more parts, wait for them to arrive, uh, deal with deal with postage delays. Uh, if we break something, you know, and we have to order it all over again. Digital copy paste, much easier, huh? So all I'm doing here is just changing everywhere where I've uh, referenced the word sequencer one, just changing that to sequencer two. 
And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this second rate to uh, to lock because I want this to not wait until the next phase of cycle to to make its adjustment. And that's really the difference between these two modes here. Cycle will wait until the end of the phase, uh, and and lock will just interpolate and try to make that as quickly as possible. You could leave this as we have it now, and you've basically got your um, polyrhythmic sequencer. Uh, the rate object already handles the um, the the note uh, the divisions for you, um, like like I kind of showed you earlier. So the the rest of this stuff that we're going to put in here is only for the polymetric, which is kind of the fun stuff anyway. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up a param for the different polyrhythmic and the two different rhythm modes that we've got. And so this is a, a param that's only going to have two states. So we've got default is zero and the minimum will be zero and the max is one. And where this is going to be implemented is uh, really it's we're going to need to toggle the um, the way that we handle rate on this second uh, sequencer lane. So we're going to use the ternary operator, this conditional operator. And what is going to toggle this is our two different rhythm modes. So when rhythm mode is uh, true or one, uh, this particular inlet is uh, will will pass through, and if it's false or the uh, the the first rhythm mode index zero, uh, we're going to pass in this this second inlet. So we can toggle this from out here, and then we're going to treat this a little bit differently when we're. Um, when we're on polymetric mode. And this is because uh, in, in polymetric mode, we need to be able to ensure that both sequencer lanes are uh, having a different amount of steps, but they have the same note division. So we need to be able to, we need to perform a calculation based on the, uh, the, the ratio over here. We need to apply that over here. So first things first, we'll uh, calculate the ratio of steps and to the division. So we're dividing the reciprocal of the division from sequence of one by the amount of steps. And then we're going to use a send object. A good habit I 100% recommend if you're not already doing this is whenever you make a send, color code it. And then when you duplicate it, it'll have the same color and then you just change S to R. And whenever you open a patch, you can immediately see where the connections are that aren't, that don't have patch cables between them. Um, trust me, if you're not doing that yet, you really should. Uh, it just will make, make your life a lot simpler and anyone else who gets your patch. So now we just need to multiply the amount of steps in sequence two um, by this ratio. Uh, cool. So this is um, this is essentially like most of what we need to do uh, for our two different sequencer modes. Let's um let's have a look. So the other thing that we'll need is we'll need to duplicate all this um, out here. See, I'd like this to be a little neater, but we're working with the screen real estate that we've got. So just making sure that you change all your sequence one to sequence two. So I'm noticing a bug here, so I'll just jump in and fix that. So yeah, this can be something that uh, can maybe drive you crazy um, when you copy and paste is that uh, if you don't change the, the outlet <laughs> number, you're not gonna get you're going to get two things coming out of the one outlet. So now that we've got this all hooked up here, we can connect our final live.scope. Cool. So we've got all this stuff now and we can um, just plug in some playlist tilters again, like we did last time. So the thing that we're going to need here is we're going to need this step index um, just like we did last time. So to quickly implement that, we can just tap off here in the uh, this ceiling operator. So you uh, hopefully you can see here that this ceiling operator is just going straight out to this new outlet, and I've had to renumber these um, so that they stay stay in order. You don't necessarily have to do that, but so we're just going to do that again for sequence of two. 
So now that we've uh, we've changed the order of our outlets, uh, this live.scope is showing the wrong thing. That's where comments can be handy. You can just hover over and it'll tell you exactly what it is. So I'm gonna make two number tilde objects. When these two align like they just did then, you can see when the, when the two phases line up. In fact, I'll quickly copy over this stuff from the demo patcher. So if we want to connect up our macro phase, um, we're gonna need to run the rate from the first sequence and the rate from the second sequence into these uh, two inlets for this sub patcher. And we're going to need the, the mode to control um, which is coming in here. Because the two different rhythm modes are going to dictate uh, the phase of this. We also need the, uh, the, the main phaser. All right, so we've, um, what we need to be able to do is use the rhythm mode here that we're using this send um, to be able to control toggle between these two. So if the, uh, the rhythm mode is one, as in if the rhythm mode is polyrhythmic, uh, we're just gonna pass in the input phaser. Cool, so let's use these step uh, indices to control playlist tilde. I'm just gonna use a send and receive pair uh, signal rate to, to send these step indexes, um, the indices over here. Don't ever do this. Don't ever connect your signal out of the bottom of a, um, like a number object or a UI object uh, when you're doing time sensitive stuff. Connect it to the same outlet that it's connected to directly. We've already got this uh, this playing now, so we just need to connect it up to live.gain and we should start hearing it. In case you're wondering what I've got in here, um, I'm just using kink for sequence one, just giving it a bit more life and also using overdrive and um, delay to, to widen the second uh, second sequence, just so it's easier to hear. Uh, but you can, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, you're hearing that overdrive. So yeah, uh, hours of fun. I hope um, I hope you start to play with this and just start to find the kinds of uh, rhythmic relationships that you want to kind of explore in your own music. Um, I hope that, that you've been able to to like get a new perspective on how we might do this in Gen. Um, just building on what we've already got. So we're going to keep taking this further in uh, in the next shoot next week. Um, most likely what we're going to do is we're going to look at probability um, because similarly, uh, it's quite quite easy to implement on top of all this stuff. So if you've, um, if you've always been interested in like how might you do probability, it's the most logical step from what we've uh, what we've been doing is maybe we don't want to play every single one of these steps maybe we want to you know have some control over that so that's what we're we'll doing next week cheers everyone uh, i'll catch you then